Welcome everyone to an intermediate guide to Excel. This is the second video in this Excel tutorial guide. If you need to watch the first one for beginners, make sure you do first. However, if you already have some prior knowledge of Excel and are looking to expand, this is the video for you. And we are going to start off today by creating tables and charts with the data that I have here, which consists of chocolate bar, price, amount sold, and revenue as my headers for my future table. And then I have my list of chocolate bars that I sell, such as Twix, Mars, Kit Kats, and so on. And then the price that they're sold at, and then the amount that I sell each month, let's say. And then the revenue we can calculate later. And to make this into a table, there's two ways I can go about this. I can either highlight the range of cells that I want to make into a table, go to insert up in my ribbon and then click on table here or I can click on any cell that is currently part of my data that I want in my table and then use the keyboard combination control T and then Excel will assume what you want in your table in this case it assumes right and make sure when this pop-up comes up that you have my table has headers checked off if you do have headers in your table and then press OK and this will create your first Excel table. Now you'll realize when you click on the table, in the ribbon comes a tab that pops up called Table Design. And this is every option that you can have with your table. You can rename it, you can resize it, you can slice it, which we'll get into later. You can have header rows, total rows, first column, and you can create the color of your table. I prefer the light one, which doesn't color it in at all. And then I can just create my own color for my headings. In this case, I'll go home and then highlight the background. Let's go with blue. And in my table, I have my price as one, $0.5 all the way down. However, it doesn't look very nice. To fix this, I'm going to format the whole row by highlighting everything. And then I'm going to right click Go to Format Cells, and then this pop-up will show you every way you can possibly format the numbers you have, and there are special custom features that you can do too. However, for now, we're just going to stick with the general categories, and we're going to go to Currency. And right here, you can specify the number of decimal places you want after the first dollar. And since we have things that are only worth half a dollar, we're going to keep two decimal places so that 50 cents shows properly. I'm going to press OK, and my whole price column is now going to be formatted properly with dollar signs and 0 0.50 in front. Now let's say I wanted to add in another chocolate bar, such as Snickers. You'll see that when I do it in the row directly below the last row of the table, it will automatically include it in the table itself. So I'll, I'll put Snickers here, and then it becomes a part of the table. I can tell because this small blue hash in the corner here moved down by one. And this cell will already be formatted just like the rest. So I'll put this one at $1 too, go off of it, and it automatically forms it, formats it as currency. And for the amount sold, let's just say we sold 14 that particular month. Now we will fill in our revenue column, which is just equals our price, times our amount sold and it will automatically fill out the whole column for us with autofill we can undo this if we want but in this case we like it so i'm just going to keep it now you're probably wondering what these little small arrows are doing here you possibly have created charts before where the arrows are covering your headers like so and it doesn't look very nice so what i would suggest in this situation is just to highlight all of the columns of your table and then just double click on one of the dashes that come up like so and it will evenly space out your headers along with the little arrows and now what these little arrows do is basically allow you to sort or filter the information you currently have so right now i'm going to go into chocolate bar type on the small arrow right here and then say i didn't want to see the information for twix or toblerone i'll just select those two press ok and it will hide them in the table so you can see right here, it goes from 2 to 4, so it just automatically hides row 3. And then here it goes from 8 to 10, it hides row 9. And to get them back, I could just click them back, 
or I can press the clear filters, which just get rid of any filter for that column. Now, if I go to revenue and I want to know from largest to smallest, who has the most revenue, you know, depending on the chocolate bar, I can once again, click on this little arrow and I can go sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And it will work out like that. So 22, 15, all the way to 2.5. And I can clearly see who my winners are and my losers are. You can also create your own conditions for the filters. So for example, I'm going to go to amount sold and then right here is number filters and I can just have a custom filter if I want. I can choose my top 10 above average, below average. So right now for my amount sold, if I go here, number filter and then above average, anything above the average will show, which is only Twix, Kit Kat and Mars. And once again, it just hides the columns on the left. See how it goes three, four, skips five to six and then everything else is below the average amount sold. And I will put that back by pressing clear filters. Now, say you wanna create a visualization of your table here in the form of charts, graphs, whatnot. All you need to do is click on one of the cells in your table, go to insert in the ribbon, and then find recommended charts. Next to recommended charts, there will also be other charts such as the pie chart, line chart, bar graph, so on. However, I recommend you click on the recommended because this will show you which charts are best for the current data you have. However, if you want something different, you can just go to all charts right here and then it shows you every single kind of chart that they have. However, for this one, we're just gonna stay with our recommended chart, which is just a bar graph, really. We're gonna press okay and it's gonna insert that chart for us. Now it is showing us every column that we have. It is showing us our price of our chocolate bars, our amount sold and the revenue. However, in this case, I just want the revenue. So I'm gonna click on my chart and then I'm gonna right click on it once I have it selected. And then I'm gonna go to select data. And this formats my table in the way of columns and the rows. So if I wanna take out some chocolate bars, all I would have to do is unclick right here and I would take out Twix and then KitKat and so on. However, I'm gonna keep these in right now. And I just want my graph to be revenue only. So I'm gonna take out price and amount sold, press okay from the data labels, and then it will give me all of my chocolate bars just with my revenue. Now I know it looks pretty basic right now, so we could change that up by going to the chart design tab, going to change colors. And then there's some preset colors for us right now. We could go blue, stay with gray, go to yellow or whatever you want. I'm just gonna to go to blue really quick. And then you also have different chart styles. You can just pick whatever one looks best for you. I'm going to pick this one because I like the gray background of it. And it also provides data labels instead of a left axis. I don't want that though. So once again, in my chart design on the left, you can go to quick layout and it gives you multiple layouts or you can create your own by going to add chart element and you can add your axes, your axis titles, chart titles, data labels, and so on. Right now I want my vertical axis back. So I'm going to click on this and it keeps my data labels too, which is nice. I can go here to take them out and put them in the center, the inside at the end, at the base, at the outside end. I prefer the outside end usually for my data. And then you can also go to error bars, grid lines, a legend, tread lines even, which wouldn't be applicable in this scenario. However, I'm gonna to go to axis titles and then put in a primary axis. I'll call it, and then I'm just gonna click on it right here. I'm gonna call this one chocolate bars. And then I'm gonna go back to add chart elements and then add in a primary vertical axis title. Click on this as well and then call this my revenue. But apparently I don't know how to spell revenue. There we go. And then to change my title, I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna be revenue of chocolate bars. That's how you formulate a graph nicely. And to access more options for it, you can once again, click on it, then right click. And then you can go down here to format chart area. 
And this will give you many chart options, such as fill and border, if you want to color it some more. Or you can go to text options and then modify the text on it as well. If you want to modify something specific on your chart, however, say the increments of your vertical axes. You can then click on it, then right click on your vertical axes, and then go to Format Axes. And then you can pick the units that it goes up by. So right now it goes up by 5. However, if I wanted it to go up by 10, I can rewrite this as 10. Click Enter. And then it will go from 0, 10, 20, 30. And you can do the exact same thing if your numbers are on your x-axis instead of your y-axis. And then I'm just going to reset this right now because I like the way the 5 looks. And then I can X out of this. This is also applicable to the x-axis, the title, even my data labels right here, I can't really see them right now because they're white. So I'm just going to go to Format Data Labels, and then Text Options, and then my Fill. I'm just going to change that to black. And then it's now just more visible. And there's plenty of formatting options that you can go through by yourself just to explore them and learn more about it. However, the important ones of changing the increments of your axes we went over. And that's pretty much all you need to know for tables and charts. Now, another thing you must know if you want to be considered an intermediate Excel user is how to conditional format. So, for example, I'm going to use my amount sold column here and conditional format it. And you can find this in the home ribbon. So I'm going to highlight my range of cells of amount sold and then click on conditional formatting. And this just formats your values in a way that you decide. So basically, if I use data bars, you can see that the 30 being the largest number is filled in completely. And then it shows a scaled representation of all the other numbers compared to 30. I can also use color scales. So for this one, the greener, the higher, and the more red it is, the lower the number. And you can also do the same for icon sets, whether it be arrows or shapes, indicators, ratings. It's a very helpful tool. However, in this case, I would want to go with color scales because I find it the most helpful. And I can go red to white as the lightest. However, the green to red scale with yellow and orange in between is probably the most widely used one. So right now, right away, we can see what is biggest, the 30, and what is smallest, the 5, without even filtering it. Now, if I filter it here and I go from largest to smallest, we will see the colors lined up from red to green. Other ways you can conditionally format too, for example, if I highlight my price column, go to conditional formatting, is you can insert your own rules. So it doesn't have to necessarily be just biggest to smallest, or other rules here, top to bottom, your top 10%, your bottom 10 items. So in fact, let me go to revenue right here to showcase this top. So my top 10% revenues, I would like to highlight, so I'll click on that choose what I want to fill it with, and I can also change the 10%. So right now, the only thing in the top 10% is the $22 mark. However, I'm going to increase this until I get my second value as well. So at about 25%, it shows me that Twix and KitKat are within that top 25 percentile for the revenue sold across my chocolate bars. I'm going to press OK, and it's going to highlight them red. Now, if I go to KitKat over here, the Coffee Crisp, then to conditional formatting again. I can choose cell rules as well. So whether it's between equal to text that contains. So if, for example, I just wanted something that was text that contains the letter A, it would highlight everything that has the letter A in it. But you don't really need to conditionally format text too much. So I'll go back to my price column, back to conditional formatting. And then the last thing I want to show you is new rules and manage rules. So in new rules, you can create your own conditions for which cells should be formatted. So right here, you can do format all cells based on their values, format only cells that contain so-and-so. And then you can create your own formula too, if none of these are your fancy. So for example, right now, I'm going to go back to format only cells that contain. And then I'm going to say, well, let's say they're between 0 0.6 and... 1.2. So only my $1 values should be highlighted. However, I format it. So let's go to Format, Fill, 
I want it to be filled in purple. I want there to be a border outline. And then I want the font to have a strike through it. Press OK. And all of those formatting options should occur for cell values between 0.6 to 1.2 in my price column. I'll press OK. And there we go. All the $1. The borders are highlighted. The strike through and they're purple. The last thing you need to know to officially become an intermediate Excel user, I would say, is the Format Painter, which is more of a beginner technique and it is really, really useful. So right now I have my chocolate bar price amount sold and revenue. However, let's just say I changed what the chocolate bar header looked like. I chose a different font. I went to Calibri Light and then I made it 14 size. I'm also going to double click on the stash right here so we can still see the whole thing. And then I surrounded it with a thick outside border. I made it bold and I italicized it. Now say I forgot to highlight the whole header when I did this and I want everything else to look at it as well. I can use the format painter for this. So I'm going to click on the cell that I want to represent my format. So this header of chocolate bar. I'm then going to click on the format painter and then click on the next cell. And all the formatting that I just did to the cell B2 will now happen to the cell C2 when I click on it. As you can see, price now looks the exact same. If, but the format painter goes away as soon as I click on something. If I wanna continue formatting wherever I please, I'm going to once again click on that cell. This time I'm going to double click the format painter and then I'll just click on whatever cells I want to make like that too. Say I wanna make all the chocolate bars like that too. Just like that. I can also drag down. There we go. And that's basically just how you use the Format Painter. Just a really convenient tool to format other cells the way one cell currently looks. And congratulations, you are now an intermediate user of Excel. Make sure you tune in and watch the next video, which would be Advanced Techniques in Excel. We will be going over things such as recording macros and pivot tables. Pivot tables are just like normal tables, except you can do a whole lot more of them, and they are very useful to know. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all, please make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below if there's anything else you would want to see in the future. And make sure to check out some of my other videos where I go over other Excel tips and features, such as my functions playlist, which will be coming up next.